Chris in Grand Rapids. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing today? Okay. Oh, pretty good. A little sick. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, the reason I called in today is because I wanted to present, present to you guys a rational reason um, argument why creationism should be taught in a science classroom. Oh, that's, this would be good. Um, yep. Now, um, the first part of my argument is that evolution is true. And by evolution, uh, one aspect of evolution would be that um, complex life came from simpler life. I am more complex than my ancestors, and my ancestors were more complex than their ancestors. Okay, so I, I, have, agree with that? I have to stop you right there. Complexity is not the issue. E evolution, no, so you evolution. Do not, you do not believe that simple life um, comes before more complex life. Uh, yeah, we have we have very simple beginnings, and it's more complex. But it does, you can't portray it as a ladder evolving towards something that's more complex. That's just not the way it works. Is I'm it, not saying there's an end goal to the complexity. I'm saying that well, there's not always there's complex there's, currently. Then it started from something simpler. It, well, well, my point, which maybe you don't disagree with, is that the reason I objected to complexity is that the next random mutation that survives could be less complex under some some scale there's no it's not like a progression of complexity but yes from very but you did, but you did say you did say we had simple beginnings so can we, can at, we settle on that that we have simple beginnings as, as far as we know yes okay uh the second basis for my argument is that evolution is fundamental to the understanding of the science of biology and again by biology i mean the study of living organisms either that lived in the past or that currently lives. Okay. Would you agree that evolution is fundamental to understanding biology? Sure. Okay. So if we think about those two premises and we take them to the logical conclusion, when we ask, well, as in a biology class, for example, well, where did life come from? We would then expect to see if it came through natural means that all around us, life would just be popping into existence. Now, a lot of it may not be well suited for its environment, and it may just go extinct after a second. No, no, but Chris. But every now and then, one would be suited for its environment. Chris, Chris. Uh, yeah. So there's about 12 problems here, and I want to try and hit them real quick. Um, you gave what? you gave two premises, and then you stopped constructing an argument and just said, if we take it to its logical conclusion, we get blah blah blah. Uh, that's not the way a logical argument works, but what you're trying to say, uh, what, or actually what you said, is that we would have to then talk about beginnings, which, while it is the foundation behind evolution, is not actually a part of it, this idea of abiogenesis, and it's an issue that we haven't solved, so we certainly should continue to explore the beginnings of life. But then you made this statement that made it sound like you expected life to constantly be beginning all around us all the time, which is absolutely nothing like what evolution would say. Well, because evolution addresses life once it already exists. What I'm talking about is life actually starting. And since evolution is so fundamental to the understanding of biology, and, right. um, but and since it has simple beginnings, like we established, we would then expect origin of life to also be incredibly simple that um, on a planet like we are now that can support life, no, no. we would expect so, it just to uh, be popping in existence but not be suited for the environment. No, no. it could no, take no. a very complex process that was only in effect, you know, a billion years ago when the planet was very different than it is today. Um, you know, or bill, I think 3.5 billion or something is the estimate. I don't, I don't believe that we had the same environment on Earth that we have right now as far as atmosphere and what was happening. Yeah. And it could be that it took a very, very complex chain of chemical events to produce something very simple that was biologically driven. Meanwhile, I, mean, I don't know. Meanwhile, studies are showing that we could be very be, uh, could be seeing your scenario happening on multiple worlds, multiple planets in the universe and that the building blocks of life um, may be abundant in the universe, but there's nothing that says uh, within, within evolution or within the study of biogenesis and abiogenesis, there's nothing that says that the earth maintains an environment that it consistently should be producing new life. That's simply false. The Miller-Urey experiments that were done uh, that demonstrated to some extent 
the building blocks of life from non-life, one of the primary objections to their particular study is that they didn't accurately replicate the conditions of the Earth at that time. And so in this study of abiogenesis, which you can read more about, there are other people who've done other studies that better replicate the uh, conditions on Earth at that time. And also there's this idea of directed panspermia, that maybe the actual life origin event happened somewhere else and, and spread out, you know, an asteroid landed here and the conditions were just right. Uh, but your idea that because life started once, that it should therefore be a simple thing that should just be happening all the time on Earth as it is now, is not remotely uh, tied to anything that science understands about life. Well, there's a couple of things that I would take issue with what you said. First off, you said that, well, life billions of years ago could be drastically different than it is today. No, we don't we know what it's going to be. It could be an we incredibly would... complex process. Uh, it so could be a chemistry. Yeah, complex it, it, process it, that I brought it to be. It could so have been a complex point. chemistry. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. If you take that, well, we don't know what life was like back then. So that's therefore, not what I said. No. It could have. That's not what I Chris, said. We're talking about what the conditions of the earth were back then, not what life yeah. was. I'm talking back about then. the I'm chemistry. Sorry, yes, yes, what, what, okay, okay. Let me, let me rephrase. Since we don't understand what the conditions of the earth might have been hundreds of billions of um, We have a pretty good ago. idea. That's not what I said that's either. A, yeah, go ahead, Tracy. That is not what I said. What I said was that. Whatever the chemistry was involved that would have spawned life, like Matt was saying, there maybe life came from somewhere else. But what I'm saying is, if if we were to assume that there was some sort of a chemistry reaction that occurred on the planet that produced this reproducing cell or the reproducing, you know, biology, whatever it is, the idea that the chemistry behind that must be simple because the biological organism that resulted was simple is not a given. But you premise a lot of that with a lot of ifs. Because if, I have to if, premise it with if, ifs. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah, why, why, what's the objection? Okay, so, so <laughs> back to my point. We don't know what happened. We don't know what may have caused life sure. to originate on this planet through natural means. Uh, we don't know, we don't know through how Through any it, means. Uh, through any means. We don't know what did it through any means, but we can only investigate I, natural means. I'm still <laughs> waiting for you to get to creationism in science class. I'm, I'm trying to get to that. Okay. So we don't know how life may have originated on this planet through natural means. Now, if we look at humans, we can not create life by the definition of scientific definition of life, but we can create stuff like cells. If we were to develop spaceships in the future... Wait, um, wait what do you mean we create we cells? Like, wait, how do we create cells? I didn't know we could do that. Yeah, there was an article in National Geographic where we can create simple cells. They can't reproduce. Uh, they do have a unique chemical compound. Of the but aren't, chemi aren't they chemicals that are involved in... Um, are you talking about RNA? Like the A, G, C. Uh, they're not RNA. They're, they're cells. They're not life. It's not life. Uh, aren't it's they cells. beginning? Aren't <laughs> they beginning? That could contain wow. life. Wow. Aren't they beginning with existing biological matter to do that? They're beginning with the basic chemicals of life, which is the, sure. a, the, the okay. amino acids of the So, a, so we're going, we're going off on, non Chris, we're going off on yet another tangent. Please get to, please um, get to it. You guys keep interrupting me. I'd like to get to my point. Well, if you quit making to, mistakes. Okay. If humans in the future can take life that we created in the future to other planets, deposit their planet, you know, Earth garden, what have you, we could assume that evolution may take place and it involves creatures like there. My point about creationism being taught in the classroom is this. There is equal evidence for life originating on this planet through natural means than there is equal evidence, which is basically none, that life also was created by a creator. Wrong. No. I'm not saying anything no. wrong. No, no, no. Chris, no, no, wait a minute. Chris, wait a minute. Just wrong. There is evidence of nature. There is no evidence of supernature. I didn't, what, did, I, did I say supernature? Then you're saying nature created it. If you're not saying supernature, then you're saying nature produced it. So then what are we talking about if you agree I'm that saying, nature produced I'm it? Say, I'm saying an unknown. I'm saying that you're not saying, but you're, like but you're not including supernature in that. So you're saying an unknown natural cause, which is basically abiogenesis. I'm not, I'm not excluding supernature. You can't even demonstrate there is a supernature. So how can you include it? You, the same reason that you can't demonstrate that life would occur through natural means. But it's, you I that. can demonstate nature exists, and so we can but you can't assert demonstrate that life. 
but you can't demonstrate that life is created through natural means. I'm saying that so there I'm is nothing demonstrated Chris, to wait. exist but nature. So what else would you put in there that wouldn't be natural? Like what is there that exists outside of nature that you're asserting we should include? I am asserting that a creature being what have you that may be natural or unnatural. What would be unnatural? Yeah. What does that even mean? I don't know. Just well, then like what are you talking know, about? If you don't even know what you're talking about, how, how the can hell you does this qualify for it? teaching in a science class if you don't even know what the you're same talking about? Reason, the, same, the same reason you would say that, well, the Earth could have been incredibly complex billions of years ago, and amino acids may be in a very complex matter of creating natural life. If you don't know, we do have no, 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 no. Stop! <laughs> At no point has anyone asserted that we should be teaching in the classroom things that we don't actually know. Nobody is asserting. When we teach evolution, we're not teaching we've that we've solved the problem of abiogenesis. We will discuss the scientific experiments that have been done and the results that they have produced about possibilities. What scientific experiments has creationism done and what are the results that should be included in a scientific classroom to demonstrate the possibility or plausibility of the model that you're advocating? The plausibility of my model is based on this. We can create not life, but what may be considered the precursor to life, the cells I was talking about earlier. Again, that's not life, but many people, many scientists believe that's going to be the precursor to life. What? If what? We can do Chris, it, what? Can I please finish? No, you can't. What? Yes. You got? Because you're not answering my question. What scientific? You asked me what premise? Yes, I'm, I'm talking about scientific studies. I'm talking about human beings. No, I asked you, Chris. Chris, I asked you what has creationism done? scientifically to demonstrate its its model what tests has creationism performed that have given us results that demonstrate that creationism is a viable model the test is that a human can create creationism can potentially create life the test would be in our ability to manipulate living tissue and non-living tissue Non-living, I'm not tissue, because um, that would be living, non-living stuff, materials. You're not talking about create creationism. Create you are not talking about creationism in any context that, that anybody else is. You, your argument is basically, hey, it may be possible for intelligent humans to eventually create life, and because that may be possible, we should be teaching creationism. Well, that's not creationism. The other problem, though, is that if they could produce, you know, something that would replicate... Well, wait, 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 you just stated my position incorrectly. I want to make sure I want to get this correct. I'm not stating that simply because if, if, if creationism could exist, we should teach creationism. I'm stating that the process of natural origins of life on this planet are also unknown. I personally feel that both should... Stop. Listen. Did life begin? Stop, Chris, and listen. Are you listening? Okay, go ahead. I am. Go ahead. I've already said that we don't know, and we're not teaching that we do know. But what we do teach are the scientific processes and the tests that have been done and the understanding that we've reached about what is possible, which is why I asked what scientific testing has been done for creationism. You can't, because your argument is, hey, we don't know where life came from, so we should be teaching both sides. The idea that it's natural and the idea that it may not be natural. You have no demonstration. You, you, you what, have no, you, you have science, no, shut it. up. You have demonstrated no possibility of the supernatural, and when challenged on this, you go back to, well, I didn't say it was supernatural, it could be natural, in which case we're already teaching that. I would not say that uh, human beings creating life is natural. It I is. would not say that it, human beings were around wait, stop. years ago creating life on this planet. No, but if they can reproduce a chemistry that can do that, then we know that the chemistry can do that, and then the question only becomes, does this, you know, is it possible that this chemistry could, this reaction could occur in nature? 
And if the answer to that is sure, and if those chemicals exist in nature, and if they're found together in nature, then yes. So once, you, once you're able to produce this you know, artificially, it's almost like how we can do, um, what do you call it? We can do artificial uh, selection for evolution, right? I mean, we can artificially select and, and evolve things ourselves through artificial means. And that also occurs in nature. But if we are able to but do the fact that. But we use the term artificial means, right. means that it's not natural. It's, it's artificial. It still falls into the realm <laughs> of, of the natural yeah. what, as opposed to the supernatural. What you're using is uh, the definition of, of artificial, which is man-made, right? So yes, there is a definition of artificial, which is man-made as opposed to not man-made. But when we talk about natural causes, that is not the same definition. An, artifi an artifice, right, some kind of an artifice that exists in the natural universe would be part of the natural world. So what we've got here is a little bit of equivocation going on. I don't think you're doing it on purpose. But when we breed dogs, we're not doing anything unnatural or supernatural. Right. It, it, is, it is artificial in that it's human directed, which is generally which just is probably described. The better but the point is, when we're random. talking about a natural explanation, human beings doing it is a natural explanation, not a supernatural explanation. And not an artificial explanation. It's a real explanation of how this occurred in the natural world. You got 30 seconds to describe to define creationism as you would like it taught. Oh, the 30 seconds? Okay. I would like this to be taught in the science classroom. Obviously, natural origins of um, life on planet. Easy. Second thing I'd like to be taught is that that life exists on this planet. We do not know how it came here, but a competing idea is that a more complex being placed it here. And that being is more, uh, you say intelligent, smart, I'm not sure what the aspects of that being would be because I can't say what would be a great life, but a more complex being, uh, we can assume more complex than us because we can't do it, a more complex being placed life here. Okay, your, your time's up. From on planet. It created Your life. time's up. Just wad up Occam's razor and throw it in the trash. Yep. <laughs> hey, you know what else we can't prove didn't happen? We can't prove that universe creating pixies didn't cre generate the universe because that fits under the you know uh, complex being. We don't teach in science classroom speculative ideas that have no demonstrated possibility or plausibility. We teach well, science. Can you tell me the demonstration? Can you I'm going to hang up on your ass. I swear. Listen. Could you please tell me the Listen. demonstrable evidence of life occurring naturally? What demonstrable evidence? Of what? Of life occurring naturally. Where, where is the scientific demonstration, the demonstrable evidence? Okay, Chris, you idiot. On this planet Chris, you're an idiot. We've already told you four or five times now. We are not teaching that we have solved the issue of origins. And no one is asserting that the origins were necessarily natural. So in your classroom, what's your definition of how we life came Science student says, where did the, come Shut up. In science classrooms, as I've explained now five times, the answer is we don't know. We don't know where life came from. We are working on the issue. We are investigating. Why is that so hard for you to understand? I don't mind the I don't know. Good. But to exclude the natural, to say, no, no, we exclude, no, we don't think that's here that we're going to go into natural and say, well, that we know nature exists, we have to teach that, but any other possible theory we're going to ignore. How do you know it's possible? You, yeah. It, it doesn't, you can't even demonstrate that anything exists outside of, of what exists naturally, so what in the world would you include? There's nothing else to even examine. You don't just get to include the supernatural because you like it and it hasn't been excluded. You have to actually demonstrate the possibility that it's there. That there is, you, you have no way to demonstrate that there's the possibility. So you're just, you're, you're wanting to include something with no demonstration of possibility at all, which is something I said 15 yeah. minutes ago. What would a non-natural existence even That's be? That's not science. <laughs> science doesn't work like that. That's not what we teach. It's science, it's science about excluding possibilities. It's, we're, nobody has excluded a possibility. We're just not teaching why. Excluding. Shut up, you're done. Nobody is excluding the possibility. The possibility does not get included until it's demonstrated. 
Yeah, I wouldn't even know what you would include. It's like we can only examine the natural world, so what would you even include? Like, what else would there be? You haven't demonstrated <laughs> that my butt's not magical. Maybe I can just poop things out that come to life. I mean, that's the preposterous. You don't understand science. Plus, there's a difference between science and, and the methods and what it does and what we teach in the science classroom. And when we're in the science classroom, there are plenty of things that science is working on and theories and models. And we what we teach are the results that we have and the method by which we will correct those results in the future. There is nothing about creation model, including your maybe it's supernatural, maybe it's not. You don't get to exclude the well, supernatural. Well, and I don't even know if he's talking about supernature. I don't know what he's talking about. If he's not, then we're already teaching it. I, yeah, I don't get it. But it, it was so weird to me because, you know, when it comes to things like if you don't have something to examine, I don't even know what you would w want included. Like, if there's no way to examine it, how would you include it? You don't get to exclude the supernatural. Hey, demonstrate that there's a supernatural and we'll include it. That's the way science works. You don't just begin by asserting, oh, well, we don't know that this isn't possible, so let's spend a lot of time and research on wow. something. Oh, it's just nuts. Let's spend a lot of time on that call. Yeah. Okay, who's up?